Hey guys, welcome back, and we're going to be doing a little bit of an overview for you guys to get you guys caught up to the newest and latest and greatest of Apple. So in this tutorial, we're going to be going over the newest IDE, which is Xcode 4.5, that they've kind of added some new things to, to help supplement the iOS 6, which uh, if you guys don't have that on your iPhone or iPod or whatever it is that you guys have, you better download that so you can see the sweet stuff. Uh, excluding the maps you guys have seen that you know whatever but uh, anyways what I've got is I've got the newest release of Xcode 4 which uh, it's Xcode 4.5.1 now because they had a little update coming out later so if you go up to your about in the Xcode menu there about Xcode you'll see what version you have so you may have like 4.3 you may have like 4.4 but as long as you have at least 4.5 you'll see some of the new features that we're going to be going over and uh, just briefly overviewing and then in the previous or not the previous in the next tutorials that we're going to be doing up in the upcoming weeks we're going to detail each one of these different elements that they've kind of implemented for the Xcode 4.5 and iOS 6 stuff so if you don't have 4.5 I would advise you guys to go to the App Store search for Xcode and you will see the version that they currently have. Go ahead and download that. It is free. It's going to take you about an hour. It's, uh, it's a big file there. So once you have it, go ahead and open it um, and kind of follow along with where we're at now. Now, Apple is notorious for creating a awesome development environment for us developers to develop for the iPhone, iPad, you know, whatever device they have. And one of the things that they've excelled in is making it easy for us to make apps for all the different devices. They've also made it easy because they only have a couple devices, so you only have to work with a you know, few kind of restraints. And that was a three and a three and a half inch screen for the iPods and the iPhones and the iPad. Well, recently you know that they came out with the iPhone 5, which is the four inch screen, which this is actually what we're looking at now. And that throws a little bit of a wrench into the developers out there because then you have multiple screen sizes and you got to make sure that whatever you develop in it looks good on the four and the five and and so on and so forth. And then you know what happens when they come out with the iPad Mini, which you know that's rumored to be now, but uh, it could be reality here quickly. So, anyways, what they did is they actually made it uh, a lot more simplified with what they call auto layout and auto layout basically deals with like constraints and pinning stuff to screens and you'll see what we mean as we get into the next tutorials here with auto layouts but I'm going to show you how that uh, is basically set up in your um, Xcode environment so if you go ahead and click your view controller or anywhere within the main storyboard you should see if you go up to the uh, what is this the file inspector you should see a use auto layout within the interface builder documentation so we can go ahead and turn that off and uh, and turn it on through this menu here now there's one thing that you should keep in mind when using auto layout auto layout is only is specified for iOS 6 devices so it won't be able it won't be supported in iOS 5 devices 4.3 and so on and so forth moving backwards so just something to keep you guys uh, updated on now with it on I'm gonna show you something just quickly we're gonna throw a quick button on here and I'm gonna go up to this uh, what is this the inspector what what inspector size inspector and you'll see instead of having the struts and springs that we used to have we now have constraints and it looks like compression, hugging, all these different options that are associated to this one button. Then if we go over to the scene and we go over to the button that we're selected, you'll also see that constraints are put within this menu here, which we can we can modify and whatnot. The purple ones I'll let you know you can't mod or you can't uh, delete, but the blue ones that you can create, let's just uh, create one on the on the fly here. Um, we can go in and delete those so you'll see that this constraint has been added after we've added it and we can go in and delete them. Now we'll go into a little bit more detail on auto layouts but it's something you should definitely keep your mind wrapped around because it's going to make developing for the different sizes and the different devices so much easier and uh, moving forward. Now one of the other things that uh, they've added in is if you go over to your objects menu you'll see there is now a collections view controller and this is going to be very similar to uh, let's say iBooks where they have kind of a, a collection 
and or like an images program where it just has a bunch of images stacked in a nice formation so that is a nice addition to the uh, Xcode here which allows you to develop very nicely and you'll see we've got collection view cells this is going to be kind of like a table view but in a collection format so a lot of different options that we'll go into a little bit later on those now uh, there's also passport you guys have heard about this with coupons and uh, different boarding passes we're gonna go into a little bit about that how to develop for that similar to an app and uh, release that into the marketplace and well I want to go into detail more now I really do but uh, we're gonna leave that as far as an overview kind of the different things another nice thing that they've done is they've uh, they've come out with these container views which we can put that on screen here and you'll see that uh, it basically refers to a child view controller that we can add into there so we could have a table view inside of this parent view controller so on and so forth I won't get too much into it like I said we're just gonna be going over some of the overview and then what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to leave a comment in anything that you guys would like to see in the iOS 6 related iPhone 5 you know any type of questions going forward with that kind of stuff and if you do have any issues with some of the older concepts leave us a comment we'll get back to you so anyways that's kind of the overview and just getting you jump started into Xcode 4.5 alright guys I'll catch you guys in the next tutorials coming up